welcome in this session we are going to look at the posterior aspect of the of the thigh and by the end of this session you should you should be able to state the cutaneous innovation of the posterior aspect of the thigh you should be able to name the hamstring muscles state their origin insertion action and innovation and maybe some common characteristic of hamstring muscles should be you should also discuss the cause of sciatic nerve in the posterior aspect of the thigh welcome all my name is Horis Mignere and I'm the Eurydactyl now let's start with the cutaneous innovation now cutaneous innovation of the posterior aspect of the thigh is by these nerves the posterior femoral cutaneous nerve or the posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh root values S1, S2, S3, also cutaneous branches of obturator nerve. We have the medial branches of the anterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh and the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. Um, I think the root values of the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve are L2 and L3. Anterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh is a cutaneous branch from the femoral nerve. Remember the root values of femoral nerve are L2, L3 and L4, the dorsal division, but obturator nerve is ventral division of the same L2, L3, L4. Um, sorry, for, sorry for not uh, writing that, but yeah, um, I've said obturator nerve, ventral division of L2, L3, L4. Cutin anterior cutaneous nerve there is a branch from the femoral nerve. Femoral nerve is uh, the dorsal division of L2, L3, and L4. Lateral femoral cutaneous nerve is L2, L3. So, uh, hum. now, these, these are branches from the posterior femoral cutaneous nerve. And see branches here, cutaneous branches of obturator nerve. This is the medial aspect. Then the lateral aspect, we have the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve, or the lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh. Okay. Uh, yeah. So that is the cutaneous innervation of the posterior aspect of the thigh. We had done of the gluteal region. You should look at that if you haven't. Now, let's talk about the cause of this posterior femoral cutaneous nerve. Now, it emerges, remember, the, it emerges from the it emerges from the pelvic cavity via the infrapiriformic compartment and in its course in the buttock it lies on the sciatic nerve under the cover of gluteus maximus so after imagine from the after imagine after traversing the the infrapiriformic compartment of the greater sciatic foramen, it will rely on uh, sciatic nerve. Then below the buttock, the nerve passes vertically down on, on the midline of the back of the thigh and the leg as low as the mid calf. So it will extend uh, and at the region of the back of the knee, it will pierce the the fascia of it will pierce the roof of the popliteal fossa and run it will run along uh, the it will run along between the two heads of the gastrocnemius muscle along with the, the small saphenous vein maybe i will show you that then it lies beneath the fascia rata superficial to the hamstring fascia rata is the deep fascia of the thigh superficial to the hamstring, which separated from the sciatic nerve. So sciatic nerve will lie deep to the wrong head of biceps femoris, but uh, the posterior femoral cutaneous nerve will lie superficial to it. It is surprised the fascia and the overlying skin by a series of branches. Then we have gluteal branches. Gluteal branches uh, other texts will refer to these gluteal branches as the inferior cruneal, inferior cruneal nerves. These ones here. Inferior cruneal nerves. These are the gluteal branches of uh, posterior femoral cutaneous. Now, 
they, they cut over the lower boundary of gluteus maximus to supply the skin over the lower convexity of the convexity of the buttock. Now, we have, then it also gives a long perineal branch which winds medially and forward between gracilis. Gracilis is a mass of the, it is a, of the medial compartment of the thigh and fascia rata at the root of the rib to supply um, the posterior part of the scrotum in males and labium majus in females. So um, this course, I think it is important. First, these branches along perineal branch and the inferior cruniae nerves. And uh, yeah, maybe we look at that. Now you can see here it is. It is imagine here at the at the infrapiriformic compartment. Then uh, these are the this is an inferior cruniae. Uh, inferior cruniae. Then I want you to look at here. See this line. This is the wrong head of biceps femoris, it is then superficial to it. Then it is giving a series of branches cutaneous for cutaneous innervation. Then it will, it will uh, at the level of the popliteal fossa here, it will pierce the roof of the popliteal fossa um, to go to the, to supply the leg, the posterior aspect, the mid, the mid calf, the posterior aspect of the leg. Okay, now the hamstring muscles. The, these are the muscles of the back of the thigh. They are they include the long head of biceps femoris, the ischial head stroke, the hamstring co component of the adductor magnus muscle, semi-tendinosus and semi-membranosus. So those four muscles are the hamstring muscles, biceps femoris, the ischial head of adductor magnus, semi-tendinosus and semi-membranosus. They share the following characteristics. Now listen to these characteristics. They are all innervated by the tibial component of sciatic nerve. Remember tibial component was uh, L4, L5, S1, S2, SD. And they all arise from the ischial tuberosity and they are all hip extensors. So these are the action of the hamstrings. Hip extension, knee flexion. Okay. So if a muscle has all those characteristics, it qualifies to be a hamstring muscle. Now, we have a muscle at the back of the thigh, which is known as the short head of biceps femoris. Biceps, biceps means two heads. So this muscle, known as biceps femoris, has two heads, a long head and a short head. The long head is a hamstring, but the short head is not a hamstring muscle. So the short head of biceps femoris is not a hamstring muscle since it originates from the lateral rib of linear aspera, unlike the other hamstring which originate from the ischial tuberosity, and it is innervated by the common peroneal component of sciatic nerve, unlike the others which are innervated by the tibial component of sciatic nerve. So. That is why the biceps, you, may, you might be asked in a question, why is the short head of bicep femoris not a hamstring muscle? I've given you the answers. Let, let's look at them. Biceps femoris, it has two heads. Here's the muscle, origin, insertion, innervation, action. All of them have common actions, um, which is hip extension and knee flexion, but the biceps femoris and the semi-tendinosus and semi-membranosus have an additional, an additional action. So let's start with the biceps femoris. Now, biceps femoris, its long head originates from the lower medial part of the upper quadrilateral part, quadrilateral area of the ischial tuberosity. And whereas the short head originates from the lateral rib of linear aspera and the upper two thirds of the lateral supracondyla line. Now, uh, uh, this point about the ischial tuberosity I will explain in a few. Then it will insert into the head of fibula. Now the long head, it is the hamstring muscle, so tibial component of sciatic nerve, but the short head, 
the common peroneal component of sciatic nerve, the action of said hip extension, knee flexion. An additional function is it is a lateral rotator of the leg when the knee is semi flexed. Let's go to semi tendinosus. Semi tendinosus. It has the same origin as the wrong head of biceps femoris. So it originates from the lower medial part of the upper quadrilateral area of ischial tuberosity. And it will insert into the upper medial aspect of tibia. Now, the, the insertion of semitendinosus and, and other two muscles, namely sartorius and gracilis, is common. So they insert by a common tendon known as pes. And serinus, pes and serinus. So maybe I show you that it is innervated by the tibial component of sciatic nerve, actions, hip extension, knee flexion, and it is a medial rotator of the leg. Okay, because it is inserted in the upper medial aspect of tibia. Now let's look at the semi membranosus. Now, semi membranosus. Uh, it, it, it originates from the upper lateral part of the upper quadrilateral area of ischial tuberosity. It will insert into a horizontal groove on the posterior aspect of the medial condyle of tibia or the medial tibial condyle. It is innervated by the tibial component of sciatic nerve. Actions are the same as those of semi tendinosus. Now, sorry, this did not fit here. Uh, where, but this should be the hamstring part of adductor magnus, which originates from the inferolateral aspect of ischial tuberosity to, to insert into the adductor tubercle and is innervated by the tibial component of sciatic nerve. Its action are hip extension, link hip extension only, because it does not cross the the, the knee joint, so it can, I think, this hip extension. So those are the, uh, the origin insertion and innovation and action of the hamstring muscles. But remember the short head of biceps femoris is not a hamstring muscle. So here they are, they are images. Uh -huh. Uh, maybe I go back a little bit. I know you are, why is it called semi-tendinosus? It means it is partially, uh, it's, the muscle has a, a fresh berry and a very long tendon. This semi-membranosus, a part of the muscle is membranous. Okay, so let's look here. Now this muscle, you can see here, this, this muscle. Yeah. Now that is your long head of biceps femoris. Now this is your short head. Then the two fuse to form a common tendon which is inserted into the head of fibula. Then here, here you can see this muscle here. It has a very long tendon, this long tendon. So which muscle is that? Semi tendinosus. Then it will it will rely on semi. It will rely on this muscle. This this muscle here. This is the semi tendinous. As you can see, it has a very long tendon. Then it is relying on this muscle here. Report ten. That is your semi membranosus. Okay. You can see they are originating here. This is the this tuberosity somewhere there. But the short head is originated from the lateral lip of linear aspera and the upper two thirds of the lateral supracondyla line. So here I've cut, we have cut to show you, can you see this muscle? You see this part is membranous. So that is why it is called semi, semi-membranosus and this is your semi-tendinosus because it has a very, very long tendon. Okay, here we have cut the long head of biceps Femoris to also show you are. this is the uh, short head of biceps femoris and this muscle is the adductor magnus muscle here. This is the adductor magnus muscle here. So this is short head, 
long head Dr. Magnus, semi membranosus, sem, uh, also long head, you have cut it. This is your semi tendinosus. Okay, now, can see this, this uh, ischial tuberosity, it has two parts. It is divided into two parts. We have an upper quadrilateral area here. This area here is the upper quadrilateral area and a an triangular area. Now, from the triangular area is the, the istial head of adductor magnus originates there. It will run like this to, adapt, to insert here the adductor tubercle is here. Insertion of adductor magnus, the istial head. Then this upper quadrilateral area is divided into the, the upper lateral and the lower medial. From the upper lateral area of the quadrilateral area is semi-membranosus. And from the lower medial is a common origin of the wrong head of biceps femoris and semi-tendinosus. Then the semi-membranosus usually insert into the horizontal groove on the posterior aspect of medial tibial condyle here. Then let's look at where, where the other seed insert. Here yeah, was well, adductor tubercle, adductor magnus. Then this is the head of, of fibula. That is where biceps femoris is insert. Then this area, upper medial aspect of tibia. This is tibia. Tibia is the big, big bone of the leg, and fibula is a small one. Via a common tendon known as pes anserinus, sartorius, gracilis, and semi tendinosus insert into the upper medial aspect of the tibia. Okay, because of sciatic nerve in the posterior thigh, the sciatic nerve runs vertically through the hamstring component, lying deep to the long head of biceps, between it and the underlying adductor magnus at the apex of the popliteal fossa, which is approximately a hand's breadth or more above the knee joint. It is divided into the tibial and common peroneal nerves, but the division may occur at a higher level. The division may not occur at that level. If it divides before entering the gluteal region, the tibial component will pass through the infrapiriformic compartment of the greater sciatic foramen, where the common peroneal component will pierce the piriformis muscle. So if the division occurs where well, the nerve is still in the pelvic cavity, as it will emerge, the tibial component will emerge via the infrapiriformic compartment, but the common peroneal component will pierce piriformis muscle. The surface marking of the nerve is from the midpoint between the ischial tuberosity and the greater trochanter to the apex of popliteal fossa. We will look at what forms the apex of popliteal fossa. So here is your nerve. You can see, and here they will divide into this is your common peroneal, this is your tibial. You can see it is giving off your branch. This is known as the suro nerve. This is the suro communicating. Maybe those are details of the popliteal fossa, but. Uh, it is not bad to know. You can see this is the, this, it will lie deep to wrong head of biceps femoris, but this is posterior femoral cutaneous, which is superficial to the hamstrings. This, this, uh, uh, you can post the video and look at each and every of these are the answers to this. You can look which structure is which. So, Thank you for your attention, guys. And remember to subscribe for more anatomy and biochemistry content. Thank you.